So guys, we are going to plan an essay, and the question is, discuss the use of the cognitive interview as a means of improving the accuracy of memory. Now, when you read a question in your exam paper, what is the first thing that you do? Jason. Um, you want to underline or highlight the keywords. God bless you, Jason. So in this question, what would be the keywords? Discuss. Discuss. So we're going to underline that. And when you say discuss, what is the examiner asking you to do? Outline and evaluate. Outline and evaluate. That brings me to my next point. 12 marks. Who knows the split in terms of how many marks are allocated to description and how many marks are allocated to evaluation? Neither. Six and six. Six and six. So we're going to have AO1, six marks, and AO3, six marks. Three and six. We've got discuss. Any other keywords here that we need to highlight or underline? Improving the accuracy. Improving the accuracy. So it's telling us what we actually need to write about. Anything else, Pano? Cognitive interview. Cognitive interview. Brilliant. And this is one key thing that a lot of students say is they read a question and they know that it's on the topic memory, which we covered in detail. But within memory, there are loads of subtopics. And it's no use. Write now everything that you know in memory if it doesn't answer the question. So you can't bring in multi-store model because it doesn't answer the question. The examiner's been quite specific. They want to know, what do you know about the cognitive interview? Discuss it, evaluate it. Yeah? Now it's time for you guys to plan the essay. What you think in the end? How would you answer this question? Your AO1 points, your AO3 points. What is it that you can remember? What we've covered in the cognitive interview to plan out this essay, how would you start it? Jason, you're going to be the first one to come to the board. And as you're doing it, yes, see if you can explain to the class what it is that you're going to start with in terms of answering the question okay. and why you're going to start answering the question in that way. So just a brief bullet point. Okay, so first we start off with AO1 mm -hmm. and you define um, cognitive interview so that the examiner knows what you are talking about. Exactly, so you define the cognitive interview so that the examiner knows what exactly you are talking about. And then afterwards you can, because you don't have that much time, there's only 12 marks, you don't want to spend your entire time just outlining, you need to write it. So you briefly, um, talk about the four components, I guess. So just say what they are yeah. and their purpose. So what they are and purpose. Perfect. Jason, I'm going to stop you there. Can you pick someone in the class to come and write up at least two of the components of the cognitive interview? Um, Two. Yeah, two, and then Dan, you can do the remaining two. The first one is mental reinstatement which is about putting the person back in the event. Perfect. Uh, that's it. Change order, change perspective, mental reinstatement, and what was the other one? Recall. Report everything. Oh, report everything. Yes, report yes. everything. I had it in my head, but I came up with it. I got so excited. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Now this is my question just to everyone. It's great that we're able to briefly talk about all four components. Essentially, right in this, you've collected six marks. If you've written it out and you've elaborated on them. So if you were to elaborate on each component, you will say how it actually enhances an eyewitness testimony's recall. 
So we know that changing the order or changing the perspective does what? Um, gets rid of the schema. Yeah, it gets rid of the schema. And what is the schema? What is the issue of schemas, Jason? It's a blueprint in our minds, so we're more likely to go along with it because it's what we've imprinted in our long term memory. Perfect. Exactly that. And then with mental reinstatement or context reinstatement, as some books call it, and report everything, what are the benefits of those two components, especially the mental reinstatement? So like when you're in the same like state of mind, you're, it's easy for you to remember what happened and how you felt to report it. Exactly. And do you remember earlier on, earlier on when I described what context reinstatement was, I used the example of how when you revise, in a particular classroom or you're taught yeah. in a particular classroom and then you are tested in that same classroom versus being tested in an exam hall, you're more likely to perform better where? In the classroom mm -hmm. where you've learned it because there are cues which can help you remember. Exactly that, because there are cues which help you remember. So for our A01 marks, what is my favourite line in life? Rob the examiner. Say it all together. Rob the examiner. As you're writing, you have to be thinking, I'm trying to rob Miss K of all the marks. Don't rob me of my money. And remember, I said, when you're writing your essays, you have to do what? Smile. Smile, because it makes you feel good. Even if you don't know what you're writing, just be like, I got this. Yeah? <laughs> so we've got our A01 marks. If you write this in an exam, you rob the examiner of at least half of the marks. But it's not enough. Because six marks can be the difference between an A and an A star, a B and an A. So how are we going to evaluate this? Meta-analysis of 53 studies. Mm -hmm. uh, they found, they tested that, uh, even though they tested with students, they tested that with cognitive interview, people could recall better than a standard interview. Perfect. So, Which means it's a proper bullet point gram, saying that a study was conducted, yeah. On students. Study. Yeah, that's. Yeah. And it showed that people remembered more using the cognitive interview rather than the standard interview. On this point, you can yeah. make an evaluation on the point. So, like, study of students. <laughs> Obviously, we all know that they can be generalized to the wider population. Therefore, you care about saying, however, on just this point, yeah. before you go on making your next point, just so you can show the examiner you validated thoroughly that. Mm -hmm. to, uh, however, um, study cannot be generalized. Yeah, lacks. Perfect. So, what I love, and this is a technique that all of you can make use of, you can make a point that supports the cognitive interview. However, in making that point, it doesn't mean that it is exempt from evaluation. So even if you bring in a study, you can evaluate that study as part of your evaluation. And just by doing that, that could be three marks out of the AO3 AO points. That could be a whole three marks. He's made the point, study on students showed that people remembered more with the cognitive interview than the standard interview. However, the study was done on students, which means that it is not generalizable to the broader population. Yes, Jason? Does it lack ecological validity or population? Or population? It lacks population validity. Oh. Yeah, so ecological validity is more to do as to whether the study reflects how we use memory in our everyday lives. Oh. Yeah? Perfect. Emma's going to come up and give us another evaluation point for the cognitive system. Yeah, so it's time consuming the cognitive interview. When we did our little role play in class, we can see how quick, well, quick, quote unquote, the standard interview technique would have been versus the cognitive interview, which has to go through all of these stages of remember where you were when blah, 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 blah. 
It can be quite time consuming and police staff maybe don't have that time and energy. Plus, you guys as psychologists, you could go into a police station and say, well, do you know what? I'm trained to deliver this cognitive interview um, training. You get loads of money, but police staff see it as a waste of time. And it's expensive to have psychologists like yourself go into stations and um, criminal justice system to teach them how to use the cognitive interview. Thank you, Emma. And then we're going to have Marina to give us our final evaluation points so that we can make sure we have robbed the examiner properly. Exactly, so the cognitive interview produces lots and lots of information, but not all of that information is accurate. So that is a problem. It increases the quantity of information, but not necessarily the quality of information. Who has the actual percentages there for us so that Marina can add it on to support that research? 81% 81 correct information, 61% uh -huh. uh, false, and then it was by Koch, and the study was by yeah, Koch and Kenna, I said it. Okay, so 81% correct information, but 61% false information. That is a massive problem because we looked at the Ronald Cotton case, and you can see how false information can get someone wrongfully convicted of a crime that they did not commit issues. Thank you. So, that's your essay planned. And me, as an accurate examiner, if you expand on this point, I'm giving you marks. I'm giving you marks. Six marks robbed. <laughs> and here, we know our P, E, E, and link. So you've made your point. You've given evidence. You've done what? Elaborated. Elaborated. And you link it back to the question. And that way, you have robbed the examiner of the 12 marks, and you're on your way to an A star. Amen. Well done, guys. Yeah.